Hello, everyone, and welcome to Devotional Life with Paul and Jeannie. We're glad that you're here with us today as we head through the Ten Commandments. And as a matter of fact, this next one that we're heading into, uh, Jeannie, we just had a nice long discussion on the road uh, about this commandment. We should have recorded it. <laughs> then we'd be all done. Uh, but instead, uh, here we are spending this time with the Lord and with you and in his word and setting our day right and our hearts right. So where are we today, Jeannie? Well, we're in Exodus 20, and we know that there's 10 commandments, and we've uh, gone through the first four already, which have to do with our relationship with the Lord. One, you shall have no other gods before me. Two, you shall not make yourself a carved image. Three, you shall not take my name in vain. And four, remember the Sabbath day. So we hit on each one of those. And now it seems to turn a corner where uh, the Lord is starting with number five, and it has to do with relationships. And remember Jesus had said, all the law is summarized in these two. Love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, and soul, which is the first four. And now we're starting into the second part, which is love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. And I, so I think one of the ideas behind that, too, on the second part is if you love your neighbor, you love those around you, then you won't be doing these things or you will be doing these things right. Right. Everything is based on love. Uh, and that's taken from Matthew 5.22, if you want to look that one up again, where Jesus was telling oh, us that. So uh, number five is uh, based on family relationships. And we know again that God is uh, sets up structure. He sets up a structure in family. He sets up a structure in society. Uh, he, you know, with himself, obviously. So he wants us to follow this structure, this pattern, so to speak, that yeah. he sets up. Here's the very best way you can live. Yes, it's all done for our benefit. All done out of love, motivated out of love. So five is honor your father and your mother. So when you think of honoring your father and mother, what comes to your mind? Well, I think as we were talking today, uh, for us, it it isn't as difficult as for some others. We had really good parents. I had really good mom and dad. And uh, my dad's with the Lord and my mom's still a darn good mom. And so uh, not I didn't always agree and I wasn't always a perfect son and they weren't always the perfect parents. But the order is, by the Lord, this structure in which I give deference to, I allow myself to be instructed by and corrected by and led by uh, my mother and my father. Yeah, I think it's really important for us to to recognize what you said there that uh, we know we're not perfect kids, but uh, that our parents aren't perfect. And uh, so because our parents aren't perfect, that doesn't disqualify us from showing them honor or respect. In the same way, uh, if you're married, it, the scriptures ask us to show respect to our husbands. Uh, it shows us in our, uh, the scripture tells us in our society to respect and honor those in authority that are in the government. Now, obviously, they don't always do a perfect job, and we don't always agree with them. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, talked about that before as well, that if we're asked by those that are in that structure that God has put around us to do something immoral that goes against what God who's our first love and first one that we're to obey, then then obviously we choose to do what God has asked us to do. He so it's first. hard for us to imagine a parent that would be so off base that they would ask a child to do something that is immoral or illegal. And mm -hmm. in those cases, no, you do not have to obey them and follow what they've asked you to do. But there is a, there is a spot of honoring uh, the position that they have, just like what we do for uh, marriages and for relationships. So I think that's important to know, that it's not based on the perfection of the person that's in leadership. So I think what the Lord was after was squelching rebellion. The Lord hates rebellion. And yeah. we know, especially when kids get older and they're getting to the point where they're going to live on their own someday, 
uh, they start to think they know it all and they can be rebellious towards their parents. In fact, it says in 2 Timothy 3, 1 and 2, towards the last days, this is going to really increase. And right. Paul the Apostle says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers. And then it says, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Yeah. So that's interesting that that's put in there. So, um, yeah, that that's a form of rebellion and unthankfulness when uh, that God is wanting to curtail that that wouldn't happen. And in fact, in the Old Testament, when um, a teenager was rebellious against their parents, uh, they could the society there could take them out and stone them. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that would put a little fear into a rebellious teenager. Not to, would. not to show respect to their parents. So um, this is a promise that is given to us. It's mentioned several times in the New Testament. And it's a promise with, uh, it's, a, it's a request from the Lord, a commandment, but it has a promise with it. It has a blessing with it. It says a promise that your days may be long. Now we know that, again, if you don't get stoned, you're going to live longer. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it always means the number of your days, I think it's a quality of life once again, that you're going to have that quality of life that God wants you to have as you fall in line with what he's asked you to do. Sure. And so um, it's also been, you know, a joy. Our, our children honor us. Right. And uh, makes you want to be a better parent. Right. Our grandchildren are honoring us and makes you want to be a better, you know, grandparent. Right. And I think that's the way that it's intended to work. Right. In fact, in Colossians 3.20, Paul wrote, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. And then right after that, it says, immediately after that, says, Father do, Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they be discouraged. Mm -hmm. So there's a requirement from the Lord to be solid, good parents that are looking out after the best interests of their children and not just trying to be selfish and keep them quiet or get them to obey you because you're in charge, you know. The Lord's yeah, always got that balance. Idea. Right. Again, all the commandments are out of love and based upon love. And so if you're loving to your children, then you're not going to run them into the ground or misuse or abuse them. Right. That's totally wrong. Right. And I, I remembered also another example in the Bible where um, the parents weren't perfect, even though we highly esteem Mary and Joseph because they were the parents that were chosen for to raise Jesus. But remember when he was a little boy and they went on the journey to Jerusalem and they couldn't find him and yeah. he was in the temple and he was teaching. And uh, when his mother finally found him, you know, it says, where were you? Don't you know I was worried? And he told him, don't you know I have to be about my father's business? But then uh, it, it went on to say in Luke 2 verse 51, then he returned to Nazareth with his parents and was obedient to them. That's the New Living Translation. New King says, and was subject to them. So yeah. he role modeled everything to us. Yes. Even to how to fall in line with uh, the structure of the family that he yes. was placed in. I thought that was really cool. Right. And, you know, in God's order, the best is for a mother and a father. And we're hearing that attacked in different ways, but it says, honor your father and your mother. Speaking of them as a unit, as a team right. that has been given to you and you to them uh, in this world. Right. So if you have grown up with uh, parents that weren't perfect, we know that Jesus commands us to love them and to pray for them. He tells us to pray for our enemies and forgive them. So be sure if you have any bitterness towards the way you were treated as a child. Take care of that. Take care of that. Ask the Lord to forgive them. Do not hold bitterness towards yeah. them. Father, thank you so much for this time and the opportunity to think about these issues. They're, they're big issues. They're big issues to you and to our lives. Bless each one, Lord, as they seek now to honor their father and mother. For we pray these things in Jesus' wonderful name, and everyone says, Amen. Amen. God bless you.